faith, a new God, has arisen, and I've spoken of it before. It is the religion, the God of self, of I, of how important I am, of how good I am. And in this religion, were there to be a Messiah, so to speak, he would be the so-called self-made man. I have achieved everything myself. I put, pulled myself up by the bootstraps. I've made me what I am. That, brothers and sisters, is a fallacy. And we need to recognize that right away. None of us here have become what we are if it wasn't for a parent, a teacher, a friend, a spiritual father, perhaps, that has guided and supported us, taught us, and led us on our way. This is how the church functions as well. We have Metropolitan Nicholas, yes, in New York, and he is our diocesan leader as well. But he is not the head of the church in terms of having the power within himself to do what he wishes, that is done in a conciliatory way with the Synod and the Council of Bishops. Today we celebrate the memory of such a council, the Seventh Ecumenical Council, that blessed and permitted the beauty that adorns our temple today, the icon. Not one man said this is right, but they came together and as one voice, united in Christ, in very real state of true democracy, they blessed what is right and good unto Christ with, a, with the blessing of the Holy Spirit amongst them. We also celebrate another feast, the icon of which we have in the middle today, the Synaxis of the Ultima Elders. Fourteen of them are depicted there. And they come in a time that was dangerously painful for the land of Russia. Many of them are called Stadze. A Stadze was a person in the faith who led a pious life, who led his monastic calling in such regard that he was able to counsel others how to achieve salvation. In the middle of the 19th century, the Optina Pusin was being renovated and reborn with the first few of these Stasi. And it's a unique history in the Russian world in that it was a period of one after the other of holy men. If you wish to put an analogy to it, Russia was cramming for its exam, which was a revolution and communism. And these elders, were giving their food of faith and piety to save those who would see those terrible days. The final two are depicted on the icon holding crosses, for they were the last, and they suffered under communism, being killed by the Bolsheviks. They are martyrs. So this remarkable period of time in history gave us a fruit of unquenchable sweetness of faith. Such that even to this day, even here we are touched by it. Because our neighbors in Novodi Deva pulled an icon of the Virgin that came from these very elders. And to the south of us, our monastery of the Holy Cross, Anyone who wishes to enter, one of the prerequisites as a novice 
is to read all of their lives and understand and take them upon themselves. So this is what I mean when I speak of the self-made man. Are we not going to listen to these wondrous saints who gave us so many good counsels and so many directions? So many people in Russia came to them, listened to them, wrote them. And these saints, even some to the dying breath, responded in kind, in love piety, and helping their close ones. The power of these elders manifests itself almost a hundred years later at their glorification in Montreal, which I was honored to be a part of, as was Father George and Father Elia as well. Montreal, before the fire in the late 90s, where the structure was destroyed and rebuilt afterwards, was probably the largest church in Roquefort. Yet, we could barely move within it during the glorification. There were so many people. And it was, again, another Pascha during the Pascha period in May when the glorification occurred. What is the goal? Why do people go to these elders? Why do they follow and still read? There are sayings which is available for all our Orthodox books for us. It's another fallacy of the modern era that people think and laugh at us saying, oh, you're, you're crying over your sins. You're going, woe is me. I'm joyful. That's a false joy. People came to these elders because they professed joy. When people came to Optina, they felt a special type of joy, a special type of unity with God. And indeed, very recently, when monks from Holy Cross were able to be at Optina, they felt something special, a certain type of joy. What was that joy? Elder Anthony taught about prayer. Do it according to your strength. Do it with humility and self-reproach. And you will get used to it and will love the prayer so they will cannot take it to you from, from you from force. This is because it is sweet and gives joy. I remembered God and I was gladdened, as it's written in the psalm. Another elder always taught, we must begin with thanksgiving for everything. The beginning of joy is to be content with your situation. When we pray, truly pray from the heart, even for our sins, we are touched by God. He comes to us. And how do we not feel joy through that. When we thank him for everything that we have, and we do have so much here, are we not joyful for our friends, family, for our parish, for those who support us and guide us, even in friendship or in prayer? Recently I spoke about Praying always, and not only saying prayers, but doing actions that are prayer in of themselves. And here, the elders show truly what that means to pray always, to support and show gladness. Just as the, seven, the fathers of the Seventh Ecumenical Council, through their prayer, built a foundation where we share with them services to this day by their images adorning our temple. Yes, we must be humble, we must be contrite, we must confess our sins and humble ourselves before God. But if God himself could give his soul, his life for salvation, he will forgive us always. 
and through that we should find joy and gladness, and know through his path, through the teachings of the elders, through the travails of the seventh council of holy fathers, we will find 